later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, right out of Oklahoma City. I got my co-host with me tonight, the Southern Flame, Don McIntyre, in-house from Alabama, and we are hanging out with Mr. Rich, and I hope I say this right. Is it Badeau? That's Beto, but Beto works too. How Beto! You know? It's Rich Beto! <laughs> In my head, it's always Beto. I should have asked you that before we started recording, and I was like, oh, shit. I, okay. I didn't ask him right. to say it. That's all right, So, man. So you are a drummer, and you have been in some awesome bands, and I do want to talk at least about three of them. But I do cool. want to first, I do want to ask you, though, man, congratulations. You've had quite a year. I've seen on Facebook, I think you had a, a newborn. Is that right? Yeah, he's uh. I mean, he's like 15 months now, but yeah, my first child, it's, uh, it's been a trip, man. It's amazing. And you yeah. got, you got really married. Cool. Did you get married not so long ago also? Uh, a couple years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. So it's, yeah it's, life's been full. That's awesome. That is so awesome, man. So you yeah. now, you were originally from Canada, correct? Yeah. Originally from the Toronto area. And uh, I moved down here to Michigan about, um, three years ago or now. So now, uh, I'm just outside of Detroit, so yeah, I made the move, becoming an American. I mean, I'm always going to be a Canadian, but I'll have a green <laughs> card now. <laughs> it's so crazy. I'll still say hey at the end of sentences. Hey, <laughs> hey. nice, <laughs> nice man. So the first band I do want to talk about, and we'll probably talk throughout the show about, is uh, a band called Finger Eleven, which you were the drummer for that band from, I believe, like the late '90s to like the. 2012 something around there yeah i think i guess like 97 till yeah i don't know when it ended but yeah 2012 13 that sounds about right dude one of my favorite albums ever like growing like i guess i was already kind of in high school uh, or after high school was the greatest of blue skies album oh cool that yeah. was that one song I don't, I don't remember the name of the song but uh there was one song on there that really just caught my attention. It's like it's biting, it's bleeding, or oh, yeah. whatever. However that drag you down. That was like yeah, drag you yeah, down. Yeah, dude. That I heard that song and I was like, who is this band? And then and that was like that was it for me. That was like my introduction to Finger Eleven. And That's I awesome. always thought, I always thought, and I and I'm probably wrong. I always thought that Finger Eleven was a Christian rock band, but I don't think that's the case anymore. Or is that true? No, no, it was never a Christian rock band. No, not at all. I mean, it. we toured back in the day with Creed quite a bit. So I don't know, maybe you got you know, lumped in with that maybe in your thoughts. But yeah, no, we were never uh, any sort of religious affiliated band. We were just straight up rock and roll band, man. Okay, yeah. I think it was because on the Grace of Blue Skies, isn't there like a cross on the album cover that's gonna, like, getting dragged or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what it is? It's like a puppeteering cross, though. It's like it's like a guy, a puppet pulling his own. Uh, I don't know what the name of that is, but you know the thing that controls it. So it's not a cross, but it's uh, I guess it's same shape as one. But I don't know what the word so that, for that thing is that you know manipulates so, the puppet, so, whatever that's called. So I I better make a public apology to every single person I lied to, saying check out this cool Christian <laughs> rock band I just found. <laughs> All right. hey, hey, you know what, man? I, I I'm a spiritual dude, so yeah, it's it's all good. The song that drove me in was faith. paralyzed. Yeah. I'm sorry, my lag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, paralyzed yeah. drove me in. Sure. Yeah, that was the one. Well, that one got a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of attention to the band. But that was like, you know, five records into our career. So we right. uh, we had a whole lot of uh, non-hits before Paralyzer. <laughs> so it was nice, <laughs> like what, uh, 10, 15 years into it to finally get one was good. But once you say that one song that dragged you in, you go back and you research the rest of the music, and that's how people discover you. That's so true. It, yeah, that was and, and you know, that album, right, that album uh, that you're referencing, Grace of Blue Skies, for some reason, that one was always, uh, especially like with a lot of other band guys and stuff, that that was really a, a special record. I, I don't know, you know, maybe it's the time that it was made, what else was coming out at that time, but um, yeah, a lot of guys that we've met over the years, of like reference that record as you know an important one in whatever in their band or whatever was going on in their lives so it was a cool man it's it, when we made that album we were so young but looking back on it i think it might be my favorite now throughout all of it just because you know there's something about it that when i hear it i can tell we're still like young and excited and sort of green and uh that angst that's on the record you know it's cool and it's a great sounding record uh, arnold laney that produced that record it's it still sounds really great 
for sure. So, yeah, yeah, and the style the style definitely changed from that album too when it came out with Paralyzed. The, the style of music you guys had to change, but you know the record labels get involved and production gets involved and. It's all about making money and, you know, who knows, but the style has changed, but you guys still had a very, a very like unique, Mm -hmm. hard, kind of a hard rock sound um, that I loved uh, with Finger Eleven. Now, you personally, when did you start playing the drums and what got you into music? Um, Well, well, just to go back one second, I got to say, definitely with our band, we never had any like record company influence. Oh, good. Because okay. we would we would have been dropped years ago because like I said we didn't have any hits so I mean that was uh, the the sound just sort of evolved w- with us as a, with age but you know we were lucky to never have a uh, I think when you have like a big hit for a first record then I think maybe the record guys get you know, they want to recreate that but because we didn't really yeah. have that all the sound of our band just sort of grew with us you know um, I, so I can thankfully say that that was never the case it just sort of morphed with our age but. Um, yeah, I started playing drums when I was like nine, ten years old or something. Um, started playing in bands right away. I was, I was like writing songs and working in original bands from I think like the seventh grade or something. Always with that intention and dream to sort of you know to make it one day. So, yeah, it was cool, man. I, I started playing with a lot of older guys when I was really young in in the town that I lived in. You know, I guess there weren't a lot of drummers, so I, there's you know, never a lot of drummers. Enough. You know, hard to find a never, good drummer. It is. It's super hard to find. A, okay, now I kind of want to go back to what you said, though. So, mm-hmm. so then, do you know? Because you know, I, I've never been in a, in a band that's made like super big. I've been in bands with no, no one that's been ever mainstream ever, like or even close. Yeah. Uh, right. When you said that, you know, you guys were really influenced by producers and the industry. Do you personally know? Sam, I mean, you played with a bunch of bands. Do you personally know people that? The record label did influence their sound and and what they put out there after their first album came out um i'm sure i do along the way you know you have conversations with people uh, you know not nothing that really jumps out of my memory but i think every band has a different trajectory of their career it just depends what band signed to what labels you know you might if you sign to a big huge you know back in the day atlantic records or something they're going to want to have hits so they're going to be really part of the the process of making a record but we signed to a much smaller label back then uh, called mm-hmm. wind up records and they only had, had creed before us that was the only other band they just started and their first band was creed wow. so we were we were sort of allowed to you know we had a lot more freedom to do what we wanted and because our first record didn't have any hits we were able to make a second and a third record where if we were on a, a big major label you know we never would have had that chance to have dropped us right away so it was cool to be on a smaller label. It took a little longer to get things going with the band, but I mean, we were allowed to continue to make records and, and to have a career until finally, you know, we got a song on the radio. So, but yeah, I'm sure some guys have told me stories over the years about, you know, them doing what they didn't want to do, but I don't, I don't remember specifically who. <laughs> right. there's a bunch. I'm sure there's a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> but you were still doing what you loved and you got to enjoy the yeah. process, even though you weren't, mainstream on the radio it was still your passion oh yeah so. oh man you know it, it was awesome i mean and the thing about our band in canada we really right out of the get-go had like a lot of success in canada so even though in the states we were still growing very sm- like very slowly uh, we were able to tour canada and every song that came out up there did really well on the radio so we were as time went on able to like you know, spend a few months up there a year, make a little bit money to pay our bills and then spend the rest of our year being down the States and, you know, slugging it out in a van and trailer. So we, we were kind of, it was lucky to have like our home country was always there to sort of support us, like kind of financially in the beginning where we could make a bit of money and mm-hmm. then come back down here when there was really no money to be made at a band at our level back then. But so, you know, it was kind of cool that we could sort of jump back and forth across the border and and make it work you know where a lot of bands didn't get that option you know that it was like you put out one song if it doesn't work you're done you're dropped so we had a pretty cool you know and it, the other nice thing about it was that it happened slow so we were able to enjoy it as it went you know we didn't come out of the come out with like a tour bus and a bunch of crew and all big lights and everything we started really small in a van with just like you know i think a sound guy and a guitar tech with us you know one hotel room a night I mean, we traveled like that for years and years and years Till eventually we could afford like a shitty old bus 
<laughs> then it morphed, you know, to a better bus. And there was like a couple of hotel rooms. So throughout that, it was like a bunch of years along the way, but we were able to appreciate it as, as we went, you know, cause it didn't, didn't come overnight. Right. Well, Sebastian and I have actually had, um, has had some interviews with others that the experience was mm-hmm. totally opposite from that, that Canada right. was not as supportive, but when they come to the States, they got more support. So it's glad to yeah. hear that you did have yeah. that support there. It probably yeah, there's a lot of bands. That, Go ahead. There's Sorry. a lot of bands from Canada. That's okay. A lot of bands from Canada has have had some great success over the years down mm-hmm. here. I mean, right. You know, we kind of came up with a lot of, especially like Nickelback, of course, we, we knew, knew those guys when we were all playing bars together in Canada, small bars and, um, you know, Our Lady Peace and Sum 41 and Simple Plan. And, the, you know, our, there, I mean, well, there's a bunch. We were all, uh, back then it was cool. I mean, we all still are friends, but only a few of us really, for whatever reason, it worked over here in the States. For some reason, there was a lot of Canadian bands that were very popular there that just for whatever reason, people, you know, there's a band called the Tragically Hip from Canada that um, their singer has uh, since passed away. But I mean, they're like a legendary Canadian band. They would sell at every hockey arena, uh, like throughout the country. Like they could do three, four nights uh, at every hockey arena. But down here, they would play at like a, you know, 500 seater and, you know, barely fill the place. It's weird, man, because it's so close. The border's right there, but there's just some bands that are like the Canadian bands. And then, you know, they just, <laughs> Do not work in America. I don't know why. <laughs> it's right, like, right. It is so working. It's like it's literally like just right there, you know, across the border. It's right like, there. It's, yeah. so Especially that's where weird. I live, like just outside of Detroit here, I could literally, you know, throw a rock across the water and I'm, I'd be in Canada. You know, it's it's like literally <laughs> right there. But there, there's not a lot of big differences, but there are some musically for sure. But we were lucky to always, you know, be able to uh, tour down here and have the support. And we had an American record uh, contract or company as well. So. Right. Their focus was to get us going here, so it was cool, man. Yeah. So, seeing work since you've you've been in, and we're gonna talk about some of the other bands you've been in, but mm-hmm. playing music and starting, you know, getting a lot of traction, especially like in the early two thousands, um, and then seeing today in twenty twenty one, you know, do you see a big shift in the music industry when it comes to rock music, as far as bands getting signed and how much money they can make, and so on? Um, yeah, man, it seems like now, nowadays, more than ever, a band can kind of do it on their own, you know, Mm -hmm. um, just with the use of social media and it, 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 yeah, it's amazing. I see bands now and they really are growing everything, you know, from the ground up without any help from anybody else. And back in the day, that was, you know, almost impossible to do. So as much as things have changed and, you know, of course we all know the story about bands not selling records anymore, but throughout that all bands mm-hmm. have found ways to you know do everything on their own make money their own way um so it's it's been cool to see man but it's different but it, at the end of the day it's still that same story of guys getting together and, and starting a band and trying to get a song on the radio and going out and playing shows i mean that sort of you know that tale of rock and roll has always been the same it's just you know just changes throughout time a little bit yeah, yeah man process yeah and then okay so the other band i want to talk about is uh saint asonia right yeah. so you were in that band for, for how, long, how long were you with them for um i don't know if maybe four or five years i think it was right after uh, me and uh adam the singer from that band is the singer from three days grace okay. uh, when he left three days grace to, uh, to start something new it was right around the time I was sort of, you know, nearing the end of my time with Finger Eleven. And, you know, we both sort of started that band. And then at the same time, Mike Mushok from Stained, um, their band were taking a little break because their singer was going to do some country stuff, Aaron. And uh, yeah. so it was just good timing. You know, everyone kind of had some free time and, and was able to do that. And, you know, went and made that record. It's a cool record, man. I'm really proud of it. And that was a really, you know, it was a great bunch of years we got to travel the whole world you know at places that i'd never gone to with finger 11 so it was uh it was really great you know another chapter of of my story for sure that i definitely am grateful for do your next door neighbors know that you've like toured the world and played in a bunch of awesome awesome bands like do your neighbors know that (laughs) uh i don't know i'm not sure maybe some (laughs) do i mean yeah (laughs) Come over, grab some I don't think, not, 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 in a, not in a weird way. If they do, it's not like a weird, you know, it, it probably would come up naturally and stuff. But um, 
I'm sure some do and some don't. <laughs> I, mean, I be walking around telling everyone, you know, I used to be in a really good band, by the way. Like, I'll tell, uh, I'm, 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 I'm that kind of guy. You know, I'm that kind of guy. Right, Sebastian's right, right. ego. <laughs> I know. I tell everyone right. about my podcast everywhere I go. By the way, I got a podcast. Check it out. Like that's that's what I do. Right, to, yeah. to, but I guess once you've been there and done that, you don't care as much. I'm still I'm still in the beginning phases of of caring. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, like. I, I I definitely am still. Um, you know, the next thing I'm excited about. So we'll see. I, I guess I want to tell people more about the present than, you know, than the past, you know? Yeah. So, okay. So what do you, what do you have going on um, now musically? Are you joining, are you in, the, in talks with other people about uh, starting another project? Drum roll. I am. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a band from Detroit that I was working with for about a year. Uh, the name of their band's No Resolve. Um, I did a, a bunch of music videos with them um and they're really cool guys it's a really cool band it's just that sort of their the things that they're doing the path that they're on i had a little, kind of a different um you know i, I kind of want to do something a little different but uh it was a really cool uh, year spending with them and sort of you know learning hanging out with some new guys and they're they're one of those bands that are doing things a lot differently than than i had done before they're, it's, they're doing everything themselves um I mean, they're generating their fans through TikTok and stuff like that. It was really interesting right. to to see the way they're doing it. But um, just for me, I was sort of uh, looking to do something a little different than they were doing. But uh, the last year I was working with those guys. So coming into the new year, there are a few things coming up that, you know, that we'll see how it all pans out. Um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, what will become of what, but I'm excited, man. There'll definitely be some some new ventures coming taser, in the new year. Rich. Fingers crossed. It was yeah, a teaser. A teaser. <laughs> it was if a teaser. I give a teaser, I'll I'll jinx it. I don't want to jinx anything. Don't jinx it. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, well, I definitely we're... have fingers crossed. Plans. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely hope to be doing some stuff into the new year, but we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. Time will tell. Right on, man. And what would you say some of your favorite tours are? Because I know you've, like you said, you've played with Creed. You played with a bunch of, of awesome bands. You guys played a Vans Warped Tour, uh, you know, in the past. Do you have one that you would say is kind of one of your most memorable kind of on stage performance yeah. or just a fun experience in general? Um, yeah, with St. Asonia, we did um, the final tour with Motley Crue in Europe. Their, their last bunch of shows they did. Um, it was us, Alice Cooper and Motley Crue. So that was you know, pretty amazing. Yeah, Alice Cooper was amazing. Every night. I mean, they're all such great guys. And Motley Crue was a band that I grew up you know absolutely idolizing so to go out with them you know was one thing but to go out with them on their final run of shows which i know now they're coming back at the time we thought it was their final shows but um yeah we got to go all through europe with those guys um you know going to russia was really an amazing experience um i mean i've been really lucky to tour with a lot of, of really cool bands over the years you know so it's hard to pick one but i if i had to i'd say that molly crew one was yeah, per, pretty memorable for sure and still living the dream traveling the world it's yeah great. well hopefully again soon yeah right yeah. now me traveling the world is me running from my living room back to the kitchen chasing my son around that's, that's yeah. what i'm doing right now it's, it's, it's more work than traveling in a band but we're manifesting that we're going and claiming we're manifesting that something yes <laughs> you know yeah i like that i like that it, it's good it's, it's good taking a break especially having having a newborn and or not really even newborn anymore. I guess fifteen months. So he's running all around the house. I'm sure right now, and and his curiosity. I'm sure he's grabbing things, and he's probably getting to that stage where he's saying no. Yeah. I don't know if that's the age yet. I got a I got a six year old, so I haven't really totally forgotten yet. You know, but it's it's t right. it's tough being a parent, man. I, I bet your wife would be pretty pissed off if you have to go and be like, I'll be gone for two right, months going right. on tour. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it, there's that's been a huge thing. But also, uh, you know, something I'm pretty vocal about too is um, like going through a recovery process. You know, I, I went through a lot of addiction, uh, mm. with alcohol and drugs, and, and mental health stuff. And um, the last few years, that's been like a huge focus of mine, really getting my life back together and focusing on you know sobriety and all that stuff. But so I don't think I'm able. I wouldn't be able to do anything into the future had I not have had that time to stop get the help i needed at first and then just sort of relearn to uh you know to take all this stuff in in a with a sober state of mind because like a lot of guys you know over the years it just got 
worse and worse and worse. And in, you know, especially in music and stuff, it's somewhat accepted and, uh, mm -hmm. and pushed on, you know? So it, if you're already a, an addict, you know, coming from a, an alcoholic family like myself, I mean, I, it was just sort of a, a ticking time bomb for me. So, um, I, I'm, everything's happened the way it's happened for a reason, but, uh, the big part of this last few years was, um, getting myself back healthy, getting sober, trying to help other people get sober and stay sober. So that's really, you know, being a dad and, uh, being a husband and, you know, the, the recovery stuff's being really on the top of my list right now. So it, focused and healing, that's, that's power. So you're taking absolutely. your power back. Is it easy to get lost? Yes, it, does, it does feel like that. Is it easy to get lost, you know, being in a, in a rock yep. band and touring just to even, even being sober going on the road so quick afterwards, you, do you get scared sometimes for yourself thinking if you're around those kinds of things that it's going to be easy to fall back into some of the same old patterns um, that you went um, through in the past? Yeah, I mean, I, I would have in the beginning. Um, I, I think now, like we were talking about things into the future, they, it would have to be something that was all, you know, involved in a, you know, in a healthy place. I'd have to be whatever I'm doing in the future would have to be something healthy. Um, and I mean, I'm 45 years old now, you know, uh, going out with a bunch of 20 year olds on tour and partying like 20 year olds, just, you know, I have no interest in that. And, you know, so yeah, whatever happens in the future needs to be uh, based on where I am now in my life and the way I'm living, you know, and, and there's a lot of people like myself that have gone through this and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and aren't, you know, continuing on better and bigger than ever. You know, a lot of guys I know are sober now and touring and uh, yeah, I mean, it just, you can, you can do that shit for a long time, but eventually if you're still, you know, I've been on the road for over 20 years, eventually something is going to crack and you either it's going to end you or which it did, you know, for me for a second, or, you know, you, you fix what needs to be fixed and you get better and then you get back out there, hopefully better than ever. That's what I plan well, on doing. Well, Chris Kyle from Five Finger uh, Death Hunt yeah. is a huge yeah, good friend of mine to me. Uh, with his, yeah, I was I, I was on the phone with him up. two hours ago. <laughs> that is wonderful. Tell him we yeah, said hello. A, but yeah, he's well, a yeah, great he's inspiration a great for that. That sure, has to be yeah. that has to be good. That has to be a, a great feeling to have people that are supportive, uh, yeah. in what you're trying to do that are in the same industry uh, that you're into work wise because it is a job, you know. So it's it's nice to be able to lean on your peers for talk and advice sure. and, and to help, man. That's awesome. Yeah, we we got a huge group of guys. Um, Chris being one of them that you know that are like you guys said, everyone's got each other backs, each other's backs. Everyone talks. I mean, almost every day we're we're, we're in you know different recovery programs together, and we yeah we literally a bunch of us are on the phone together every single day talking and, and awesome. doing what we do you know to stay healthy. So Chris is an amazing guy. Man. Beautiful. And there's a reason he's so successful. You know, and it's. He's a strong-minded guy, amazing musician, just an awesome, awesome human being. His catchphrase, shit yes, son. <laughs> <laughs> shit yes, son. That's right. <laughs> Dude, I, you know what? I, I do want to ask that. I'm going to change the subject a little bit. It is important to talk mm -hmm. about mental health and, and drug addiction. And so mm -hmm. more power to you, man, and everyone going through what you're going through. Uh, more power to everyone who's, who's, who's struggling through this. And stay strong, man. But I, I do want to shift focuses a little bit because we don't have a whole lot of yeah, time absolutely. left. I, I always wondered what it was, what it would be like to play like on a late night TV show uh, where you're in a band. And now, what, were you able to play? Was it the Jay Leno show? Yeah, and, we did. Um, yeah, I did Jay Leno show at four, three or four times, I think, over the years. And I got to do Jimmy Kimmel and um, a Craig Ferguson show, and um, yeah, a bunch of those. So yeah, I definitely had those experiences and. They're definitely, uh, you know, memorable. I have actually, I got a picture right up here sitting at Jay Leno's <laughs> desk. So. That's awesome. How, yeah. how now is all the different shows with Jimmy Kimmel and, and Jay Leno mm -hmm. and Craig Ferguson, who was, I don't even know if he still has his late night show, but he was fun. I thought he was hilarious. Yeah, he, he was good. Um, yeah, he was. You know, is, is this, are the shows different from one another as far as, cause you're the band played like what was, it wasn't really a band interview. It was more of a playing one of your songs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just so performing. Are, yeah. Are the shows different? Um, e each one, as far as their production goes, and where they want you, and, and all those kinds of things. Um, 
Well, obviously, you, you know, you do them at like three o'clock in the afternoon. They're, you're shooting them earlier than they're mm -hmm. on TV. But um, I, there's they all seem to be kind of ran the same way. You know, you get there. Um, you, yeah, you, you know, you're waiting around in a dressing room and waiting, you know, for them to tell you to get on and do it. It's it, it's nerve wracking doing those things. You know, <laughs> I never did them enough in my life where that became, you know, normal or, or comfortable. Right. You know, it was always kind of scary. Probably the, the one that was the freakiest was um, with Finger Eleven. We did the Miss uh, USA show, and um, we we played Paralyzer on the show, but it was on live television, and there was over a billion people around the world oh, watching. Oh, jeez! Like, wow. With, with a B, a billion people live. On <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That's intimidating. So we're, the, we're those. <laughs> those late night shows you know they're pre-recorded like i said like three or four in the afternoon that one was like we're gonna roll your drum riser out when as soon as you start that song there's a fucking billion people watching you don't <laughs> drop a fucking stick <laughs> you know? right, right. You don't no, want to mess up. And, no pressure yeah no pressure and it was the part of the show where the girls were in the swimsuit portion of the show so it was like you know miss south carolina and the girls are all coming out in their bikinis and we're in the background playing so there was a lot of distractions uh, the whole thing yeah. was, was absolutely nerve-wracking I, I was really glad when it was over it's cool now to say i did that but at the time it was fucking terrifying <laughs> dude i can only imagine what that would be like and do you get to hang out with some of the guests on the show like after the show's over did everyone just go back to a lot of their, their rooms and then everyone leaves or is it like an after cocktail party or you know yeah hang out um, with the guests well, uh, Jimmy Kimmel had like a bar at the back of his studio that everyone hang, hung out at. Um, it, it's kind of like a, it was like a big social place that everyone basically got fucked up in after you did the show. But <laughs> the, the other shows we did, um, I think we did one with Sylvester Stallone and um, Katie Holmes was the guest on one. So you, a few of them, I walked over in their rooms and, and knocked and said hello. Um, but they didn't know who the fuck we were. You know, we were just some yeah, like, band. What the fuck do you want, dude? Get, yeah, leave me alone. Yeah. I think I got a picture with Katie Holmes just to say I got a picture with Katie Holmes, but you know, awesome. yeah, we, we, not, they weren't not, there for us. <laughs> get, get, get your camera phone ready. Get it. Knock right. on the door. As soon as you open the door, say cheese, and then, and then click it. <laughs> well, they're not even prepared it for was. it. <laughs> That's what it was. That's, yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, I bet you, I bet you are excited about your family, young family that you have, and you know, yep. I bet you're excited to get back on the road eventually, someday soon, and get back to playing Absolutely. music as 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 your main yeah. uh, as your main gig, man. You're an awesome drummer. You've been in some amazing bands, dude. You met some amazing oh, people, so. and I appreciate Thank you, you uh, coming on the show, Don. Do you have any last questions Thanks, for him man. or? I don't. I just send you all the love. I look forward to hearing new things for you. We're manifesting, Thank remember? You so much. Manifesting. <laughs> Congratulations. The positive I appreciate that, you guys. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on. I, I definitely appreciate that. I do want to thank everyone who listens to The Loud Spot. Check us out on YouTube or www.theloudspot.net. You can go to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash The Loud Spot. $3 a month really does help us out. And don't forget to subscribe to everything we got and you can hear us on every podcasting platform that's all we got for tonight's show rich thanks again for being on here peace out thank you so oh, much. and by the way go check out all of his old bands that he's been in they're absolutely amazing <laughs> and when he does something new i want to be sharing it believe that peace yeah, out you guys will be the on. first to know but, but thank, okay we'll be the first to know yes. all right yeah, third time's sure. the charm peace <laughs> out rock on that's right much love much love. All right, here we go. Yes, oh, I got my outro. Thank you. Love. This is the loud spot outro by nothing short of tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A big post has a pinch show, so to get more episodes, make an order. This is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out. Rock on. Much love.